Hi, I'm Caroline Record, and today I'm going to be demoing my project for interactive art and computational design. So the challenge I took on for this project was to create a tool for creating interactive soundscapes. So the reason I chose to do this is because I'm working on this installation right now with a dance company and a composer um, where we are using a thermal camera to create a uh, heat-based surface. And um, what we're working on right now is developing a system that can create generative sound. So that's what this tool is going to allow us to do. Okay. So the easiest way to show, show how this works is just to see it, but just as a little precursor, um, each one of these uh, amorphous blobs represents a ball of sound. Okay, so you'll see how that will work in just a minute. So here's my um, Touch OSC controller over here. You tell your name all day. How dreary do you think? Uh, 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 how dreary to be somebody? How public like a frog? Like Okay, so from this you can see how there are sound clips hidden in each of these fuzz balls. And that each clip represents a different sound. And um, so you can really add whatever sound um, to each of these uh, different blobs here. And so the way I do that is that it's linked to a template in Ableton Live. And so this is where you can add in the sound, edit the sound, so there's a lot of freedom in that respect. So I just demonstrated um, the mode where we manipulate the soundscape with um, Touch OSC, as we see here. But there's actually a completely different mode, so you might um, that we can use as well as this Touch OSC interface. So you might have noticed these sort of um, slider bars off to the side, and so that's a totally different way of moving this um, dot through the soundscape. So to do that, I'm just going to unlink the timeline. And you can see it's crawling along here with the um, time. I'm just going to make the time a little shorter. There we go. Okay. And um, so what this does is it moves um, the point of focus or where the sound will be along with the time. And then on the y-axis, it will move it with the slider. Now, the slider could be input to anything. So for example, for our project, we're probably going to be using uh, camera vision libraries that's going to dictate the movement of this slider. And that's how the sound will be generated throughout the piece. So that's sort of the basics about this patch. I'm going to be making another video that's more about how a how-to guide of how to use it. So if you're interested, look for that. Thank you.